try to put into the whole climate change debate the fact that our misplacement, damage, our pollution of water, our, our, our taking it from where nature put it to where we would like it to be is actually part of the reason that we have climate change. It's not just that water um, and water scarcity is a, an effect of climate change, uh, greenhouse gas induced climate change, which is the way you always hear it, but that in fact when we massively displace groundwater, when we massively displace water from watersheds and rivers and lakes and so on, to major cities where we then turn around and dump it into the ocean when we're finished with it, we don't even put it back into the system. Or we water deserts where we're, we're watering commodity crops that take way too much water. Or when we take part in something called virtual water trade, which is where you use your water to grow or manufacture something that you then export away. When we do that, we're actually destroying the water too. So the sale, the actual sale of water, um, has begun the actual sale and trading of water. When there are actual trading companies, water is, is uh, as a tradable good is on the stock markets. You can actually invest in water, um, not just water services, but the actual water itself. Water is, is now a commodity um, on the open stock exchange and on about two dozen indexes. So if you want to make money, you can go um, invest in water. So bottled water and groundwater has become a source of great um, uh, anxiety for a lot of us, or, or a, a place of contention, because it's really in the bottom of water area that you find this notion of commodity versus commons so clearly. Um, Nestle had been working, our understanding with the Land Use Regulation Commission, LERC, with their staff for about two years in putting together their uh, plan to, to do this. And we only found out about it, of course, at the very last minute. And the town was caught very flat-footed. Both the town of Ragley and the, the uh, surrounding plantations uh, were caught flat-footed because nobody realized exactly how serious this was going to be. And just so that you understand, Rangeley, if you think of it kind of as a circle, this is the, 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 the circle within which Rangeley has jurisdiction. And what Nestle Waters did is they came in, they bought land in Dallas Plantation, which is contiguous, but which is an unincorporated territory and as a result is governed by the Land Use Regulation Committee, LERC. So in essence, they put down a giant straw and are taking the water out from under Rangeley, but Rangeley doesn't have the ability to, uh, to control that. No, nor do we even have the ability to control the roadways in and out because they are state, uh, state highways. Nevertheless, uh, on the day of the public hearing, we in desperation called a lawyer in Portland who on the fly, literally got in his car, he's, a, he's an exceptionally good lawyer, got in the car, we briefed him as he was driving up, and he came to the public hearing, and that was the first indication that Nestle Waters had that we were gonna be very serious about the opposition that we were going to put up uh, to, this, to their proposal. Um, again, this is reminiscent of what happens elsewhere. The Rangeley Water District signed its own arrangement with Nestle Waters, saying, yes, you know, come ahead, let's, let's do this, and of course, Nestle used that as leverage when they came to the public hearing. Well, your Rangeley Water District has already said this is a fine idea. No. Um, we had a series of public hearings. They were very well attended. The coalition really tried to galvanize uh, public opinion around this. Um, just a couple of interesting points from that. The hydrologist that Nestle Waters, their own hydrologist that they brought to testify, <coughs> said when asked what the impact would be on the aquifer, said, well, we won't really know until we start pumping, which was really quite shocking. It was also clear they had no ability to determine adverse impact, either in terms of adverse impact in terms of the water levels, nor could they determine what would constitute adverse impact in terms of Rangeley's economy. And we pushed them saying, you need to have benchmarks of where the Rangeley economy is today before you start bringing these tankers through a town that lives off of tourism. LERC approved the um, uh, petition by Nestle Waters, and as a result, Nestle can take 184 million gallons of water a year out of the Rangeley Aquifer. And, and this is what is very critical for a town that lives on ecotourism, they can send a tanker through Rangeley every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Initially, Poland Spring came to town in a very innocuous uh, way that none of us really understood. And because we were naive and uninvolved uh, in planning board issues, uh, it became uh, quite a shock to us to realize what was really happening. 
and I wish Rangeley well. We've been through the court system. It was remanded to the planning board. The planning board uh, agreed that it was a high impact facility in a rural area, spot zoning, to put a trucking facility in a wooded area. Nestle's argument was low impact. Trucks 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is not a low impact, but they can make a million arguments as to why it is. The water didn't come from Freiburg, so for Freiburg it was a trucking issue versus the water coming out of Denmark to Freiburg and being trucked from Freiburg on the main highway. So for us it was a little different. The bigger picture remains pretty much the same. It is a water issue and the state's policy of uh, absolute dominion, the power of the bigger pump. And as long as uh, we have that to contend with, I think that you know, we're all in jeopardy for all of the reasons that you have also eloquently spoken. I just think that we in Freiburg have funded this legal battle for three years in the Warsburg Aquifer where Nestle pumps approximately 500,000 gallons a day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They have moved in to offer programs in the schools to run ads in the paper of what a sustainable and good citizen they are and sustainable resources and they are at every meeting with their stenographers and their cameras taking notes, taking pictures, and keeping their finger on the pulse of the community. It is all, in my view, devious and dishonest. It uh, smacks of, uh, as one gentleman in the community said, we won't win all the battles, but we will win the war. It is divided in the community, and, and it's turned it into a quagmire of controversy and blame and finger pointing and broken relationships. And so we are now, at a place where we really don't know where to go forward. We are coming to the end of our financial ability. We're coming, uh, the Nestle's has filed an appeal, even though the planning board and the appeals board have said no, Nestle's, as a good citizen that they are, is taking us back to court. And there's nothing more clear to me than taking a flowing resource that belongs to all and putting 50 billion gallons, 200 billion liters a year into plastic. 95% of which around the world gets thrown into, uh, unrecycled into streams and rivers and the ocean which is now filled with our plastics and or burned in large dump sites. That's what's happening to water. And there is no, well I guess I'd have a contest in my mind about which company I find the most offensive, Coca-Cola <laughs> or Nestle. Coke and uh, Pepsi of course take tap water and they put it through their secret osmosis process, reverse osmosis process, and they sell it back to us, is that the powers that be have discovered that water is a national security issue. Particularly the United States and China are looking outside their borders for new water supplies. So just as in the United States, where the thirsty states are beginning to look like to states like New England for water supplies, similarly, countries are looking outside themselves. Uh, China is building a massive pipeline uh, to take the water from the northern Himalayas, the Tibetan Himalayas, one of the reasons there's this distress in, in Tibet. Water that now serves five major rivers. <laughs>